Hello and welcome to this discussion here. Welcome the audience who are following us on Facebook Live. Um, welcome to today's panel discussion, which is called Be a Man, which aims to discuss male issues in the topic of gender equality, mainly pertaining to toxic masculinity as part of KSU's Your Future EU campaign, which is a project co-funded by the European Union. My name is Anderson Fournier, and I'm 23 years old, and I'm a graduate from the Mediterranean Academy of Diplomatic Studies um, after just finishing my master's in, in diplomacy. And I'm currently the vice president of the Malta Modern United Nations Society. With me today, I have four panelists, um, which I'm really excited to introduce. First three, we have Mr. Dean Jera. Uh, Dean is the founder and director of Dean Jera Hair Salon, and he is born into a family of hairdressers and has, of course, become one of the leading hairstylists on the island. Uh, we have Mr. Marco Parascandolo, who is a Maltese fashion designer who specializes in streetwear. He integrates various aspects of Maltese culture, politics, and environmental issues into his pieces and has cemented himself in the fashion scene in Malta. Welcome to you. Mr. Ben Abela, who is an actor, playwright, and director who has collaborated with various local companies, but now has founded his own collective in 2017 called the Hassel Mayet Collective. And Mr. Benjamin Gatt, who is a warranted counseling psychologist with a special interest in masculinity, toxic masculinity, and gender equality. Uh, may I remind all the viewers following us on Facebook Live that if you would like to have any questions answered by our panelists, please write them in the comments and we will get to them later on during the discussion. Um, before we start this debate, I'd like to just start with a little small anecdote for myself about being a man. As I remember four years ago, I just started driving and I had, um, I was driving down this really steep hill uh, this narrow, and it was also quite narrow. And this car was coming up the other way. And this woman uh, was getting very angry at me since I was going her way. And she, and she told me um, to be a man and reverse. So with this, to you guys, what does it mean to be a man? Whoever wants to go first, just go ahead and unmute yourselves. Can I, can I go? Yes, go ahead. Obviously, with the way that we use the phrase to be a man, I think um, you'd see that it's used in the way like loyalty, responsibility, and being honest, I think. Um, but in reality, on hindsight, I mean, it's a quality that any gender should, 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 should have and should use and should see. Like, so, I mean, that's how I would describe the phrase be a man. Thank you. Um, yeah, for ahead. for me, it uh, means to become a reliable, hardworking person that strives as that that, that thrives on success and positivity. But as obviously Dean Jera said, you don't have to actually be a man to do that. You could be any gender you you identify as. Um. I think, uh, although it's not always used um, in the best of, circumstance, of circumstances, um, it's sometimes used to justify uh, maybe actions with negative connotations. I think the uh, crux of be a man lies in uh, being brave. Um, however, I think um, what the definition of like being brave has changed from time to time. I think that nowadays, um, Personally, I think that being a man means being yourself shamelessly, whilst, of course, um, being aware of those around you, being empathetic and taking into account um, other people's feelings, which I think is much, much um, harder to do um, than it actually sounds. It's it's interesting that you started with this uh, episode, Andrew, because uh, as, I, as a very similar episode happened to me in Gozo once. When I was in Gozo, I had just started driving, and uh, unfortunately, I had quite an old car that um, had uh, not much power, so to go up this steep hill was already a feat in itself. Um, and uh, th this woman that, that came, so I'd had the right of way because I was uphill, um, and usually should have a right of way, but this woman just um, um, turned off her car, sat like this, and sort of, come on, move, you should be moving, you know? 
Um, and at that moment, I, I actually thought about myself, okay, first of all, I have a right of way, so I should be passing. And second, I said, okay, I mean, let me try my first reaction. I remember, I still remember the thought. My first reaction was, let me just overpower her. You know, that was my instinct, sort of, that came. And uh, then, to be honest, my friend had already left, <laughs> and I said, okay, uh, I think I, I think I, to resolve this, the quickest way would be to reverse all of it. Um, it was the Sun Blast um, up here, so that's quite, uh, just my very narrow road, I had to reverse all of it, that can pass, that can be, and go up. Um, so, so whilst you were saying this anecdote, I was thinking about it. It came very much to mind. Um, but what does it mean to be a man? Sort of, it, uh, it, it, it brings a lot of um, stereotypes, first of all. Um, so um, um, the, um, the others mentioned bravery, uh, honesty. Um, I would also say perhaps being independent. Uh, um, so resolve your problems um, not show any feelings most of the time all right or, or as the feelings that you need to show are particular feelings like anger for example or um so uh, this is what what we are socialized in 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 in, in, uh, in doing and how to behave how to think about uh, being a man, and I think what she was trying to tell you is sort of be a gentleman, get out of my way. Um, um, you should let a woman pass, you know. There's also the concept, I know it's not the topic, but there's also the concept of toxic mess, uh, femininity. So um, so I think I think that was quite clear there as well. But you actually felt that you needed to move. Um, I need to be a gentleman here. Um, um, so whilst my, perhaps my thinking was practical, okay, get out of the way, my friends have left, I need to catch up with them, um, and this will go on forever, your, your action was prompted by maybe, okay, I should be a gentleman here, so I, I back off. Um, but maybe you had the right to go on, and maybe, but, and, and it was going to be more of an annoyance for you to reverse all, 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 all that, um, and you had the right of way. As well, so it's interesting how these um, stereotypes and these thoughts that we have influence very much our behavior and how we behave in society and with others. Exactly. So that yeah, you all brought up very interesting points here. And in fact, therefore, what do you guys, uh, what do you guys define as masculinity? Therefore, so we kind of spoke about what it means to be a man, but now what does it mean? What does masculinity mean? I think nowadays it's quite difficult to really define uh, masculinity and femininity. Reason being, um, you know, up until uh, ten years ago, um, it was uh, that the, the, these two genders were much more clear cut. So uh, men uh, wear blue, um, eat steak, drink beer, like football. Um, girls play with dolls, um, stay at home. Um, and you know, drink mimosas. Um, nowadays, it's it's it really isn't the case. Um, the lines between genders, what is masculine and what is feminine, has been um, has been blurred completely. Um, so much so that they often overlap. Now, I mean, the color pink, for example, it was some. It's something that up until a few years ago, it was almost exclusively worn by by women. Uh, you wouldn't, as a man, you, you you wouldn't dare set foot out of the house wearing pink. Now I see uh, I, I see pink being worn on men more than it more than on women, personally. Um, that's why I think um, the concept of uh, the, the concepts of masculinity and femininity, I think, over the years are slowly disintegrating. Um, uh, I think we're slowly getting to a point where um, it's 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 hard to really um, say this person's masculine, this person's feminine. Uh, it's easier to say uh, this person is strong-willed rather than just calling them ah this person's very masculine uh, because that's another problem. Oftentimes these uh, these uh, descriptors um, are often used. Uh, in place of other adjectives uh, instead of uh, and in all the wrong ways to a certain extent instead of saying someone's weak uh, he plays like a girl um, and has slowly slowly I feel like these terms are getting outdated which I personally think is great 
Sorry, Marco, are you lying through? Uh, whatever, it's fine. Go, uh, no worry. I, I, I tend to agree that slowly, slowly, I think um, the way we define people are with the adjectives we use are changing. But in reality, the way life is marketed, we still see those pinks and blues, especially, let's say, in toy shops. I mean, you get a boy's section and you get a girl's section. So they're still completely there. Um, and you're still seeing the girl's section that's plastered with pink and glitter. And you're seeing the boy's section that are with all these dinosaurs, animals, and it's blues and all that. So in reality, the way we are marketing um, ourselves, it's still, it's still there. And it's still that way in grind. And unfortunately, um, we all fall into that, that sort of um, position when we are guilty of doing that as well. So I feel like there was an instance um, about two weeks ago um, that my mask tore and my wife passed me on one of hers and it was, all, it was very flowery. And um, my instant gut reaction was like, no, is it, I'm not going to wear a flowered mask like on my face. So I actually um, got my normal black mask and put a knot in it and, and, and wore that. So, and, and looking back at now, it's very, it's very silly, but you always feel like you're going to be judged. And, and this, is, this comes from literally the grassroots. I mean, from when the, the way we, sh we see our kids play and whatever. So there were very, I, um, I remember seeing an episode where they, where they were doing these like sort of experiments um, with children. And if you put um, a boy into a room full of toys, one of the first objects that that boy is going to go for is a doll, for example. But in reality, you'd never see dolls in the boy's section. Um, so I, I do feel, and, and a lot of this is with social media. So we're seeing a lot of um, things on social media that is opening our eyes and like we're becoming more open-minded and we're seeing people from all over the globe doing things, wearing different like fashionable clothes, wearing pinks and wearing those. But from a very young age and the way, again, um, society is marketing and, and it's a very big marketing platform um, that we're still very far behind, I, I feel, in, the, in, in these aspects, in these things. Um, I totally agree with Benjamin and Dean. Um, I think it's, it's all from influences of, of society we're in. Um, I feel like being masculine nowadays is a choice or better something you are molded in from a very young age but um, as Dean was saying I feel that uh, social media and and the society that's coming up now the new generation of of kids that, that is coming up now is more informed is more educated on 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 what is masculine and what is feminine and whether they actually exist you know it's just a uh, a word that explains your 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 sex your sex your sexuality or, or your 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 gender, you know. Um, so I think we are on the right path to kind of um, break these barriers when it comes to identify what is masculine or what is feminine. Obviously, I think one has to make a distinction between um, sort of what is biology, okay? So I'm a male, all right? Because I have certain anatomical features, all right? Um, and what is gender? And no most often, most often the gender is a socially constructed uh, phenomena, no? Um, uh, so um, actually the research is still out there as to how much my physiology, my anatomy influences my behavior, okay? So it's still being studied um, and there's no clear cut answer, you know? I would say that, for example, um, the level of, a test of testosterone of a person, for example, which is obviously prominent in men, does influence somewhat the temperament, for example, of a person, okay, um, or, or, or his behavior in some way or another. Um, but, um, uh, and obviously, for example, the fact I have a deep voice rather than I have a, a, a much... Um, um, a much less deeper voice, you know, and so um, it, it does have an influence on the surroundings that I have. Okay, so for example, there were studies that were done where um, 
where a person um, who had a deep voice commanded the room much more right, than a person who had a, 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 a less deeper voice. So there was more attention to that kind of voice. So in a way, our physiology does make some sort of difference to the, the, that's my point. Having said that, obviously, um, so my, my, I always try to think of this as um, we cannot be completely the same, okay? Um, because there are certain things which are different in males and females, but at the same time, let's celebrate these differences. Let's not be, I think the problem is with toxic masculinity is not the fact that males are different than females, right? But mostly the problem is that I'm that males and females are sort of competing for power, right? So I'm uh, as males we are trying to somehow first of all assert ourselves over females, right? So we're more powerful, we're stronger, we're better at especially these subjects. So for example, engineering, um, that's the first one that comes to mind. Construction, you know, the typical sort of stereotypical. Uh, professions that males, you know, but also um, um, also between ourselves as males, okay? Um, so um, I thought it came to mind, but I, I shouldn't say it. <laughs> it's not decent. Um, uh, but I, I think you can imagine what I'm saying, thinking. Um, but it's like trying to size up each other, all right? So uh, um, I think now people understood. I see smile. Uh, but you know, it's like sizing up each other, literally. You know, literally. Um, and 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 males do it without even without even wanting. It's like the peacock showing off its feathers. You know, trying to attract the other females. You know, and and I, I'm a psychologist, so my job is to observe. You know, I need to observe. And and and. Um, and I'm also a bit of an introverted person, and the introverted person, you know, would, would be the person who's sitting at the side observing most of the time. I've always been like that. And I think it's one of the things that drove me into the profession um, to observe human behavior. I always liked that, you know, it was interesting for me. Um, but even, even if you walk into a bar, for example, if, or if bars are closed right now, but you walk into a restaurant, you, you, notice, you notice how males are trying to somehow um, show off compete against another male um, to assert some sort of um, some sort of dominance okay there's a lot of non verbs going on right putting your hand on, uh, on on the shoulder of another person sort of okay you know um, you're not you're not better than me I'm, I'm the dominant here there's the concept of alpha males as well you know um, um, so for me being a man this is what I've learned, this is my process now. It's, it's, it's being the ultimate version of who I can be, all right? Um, sort of developing my qualities, developing my dreams, uh, developing um, what, what, I am, what I am made for, all right? So I'm probably not, never going to be a very good ballerina because my physiology is not that, of a, I'm not flexible at all, you know? Um, but I'm a good runner. Right, so I, I I can I can focus on that. Right, I'm not a very good painter at all. I I don't have the skill, but I'm a good photographer. So let me focus on that. Right, and so if if, if I really want to be, uh, I, I think the focus has to be not being a man, but being the best I can be, and this is what we should focus on. This is this is what I try to direct both my own process, but also working with my clients. You know. That's very interesting answers from all of you. And you all seem to touch on, you know, this element of stereotypes as well. And um, the, the classic stereotypes that our society has on about what a man is and what a woman is. And therefore, so what are the main stereotypes that sur are surround your field of work? Uh, especially, you know, we have got, you know, people working in fashion, you know, hairstylists, actors. But of course, Mr. Benjamin Gatt, if you feel like you have... Uh, something to answer, of course. Go ahead. Okay. Um, um, well, the, there are very few, at least in Malta, right? I'm talking about Malta, right? Uh, not many, not many male psychologists. Okay. Um, I, I so, for example, in the last uh, cohort of uh, students that graduated um, as, as psychologists, 
if I am not mistaken, there were uh, uh, two or four out of around 24. So uh, the, the ratio is quite uh, high. If you if you see how many people graduate in psychology in um, first degree, um, it's, it's, it's m m much more females than males. Okay, social work is the same, nursing is the same. So the caring professions, you know, um, uh, th there's a predominance of, of, of females. Um, obviously, it also comes the stereotype B that women should be the carers, you know, um, maybe one of the sort of darkest Florence Nightingale, you know, um, it's a male, it's a female, not a male. Yeah? The, um, so uh, it, it's a sort of an archetypal sort of image, you know. Um, that's that's so. So I think one of the stereotypes is um, th that caring should be done by females, you know. Um, also, that females are more empathetic. For example, my job is uh, empathy to, in order um, the ability to understand another person's point of view and actually feel it, live it, you know. And especially, for example, the, the, during the counseling session. Um, so people would would uh, sort of uh, there's the stereotype of are you reading my mind being a psychologist so um, i always joke and tell them if i were really reading your mind i probably don't be doing this job i'd probably be a millionaire um but um the, the thing is that's another sort of stereotype you know it's more associated with women to 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 be emotional for example you know um, and men should be rational right and um, so sometimes even I see clients that come for to me as a, to be honest, now I'm thinking about it, come to me asking for a solution, you know, uh, it could also be that because I am a maid, they expect a rational sort of solution to them. And I also have to explain to them, listen, my job is not that of giving you a solution, you have to come to your own solution, my job is to help you to guide you to come to that solution. Um, but thinking about it, it could also be the fact that I am a man, you know, that they think I am rational, I am there. You know, just to give them a solution. Anyone else would like to talk about the stereotypes that they face? Perhaps Mr. Marco Pascano. I uh, yeah, um, stereotypes. I generally find myself put is I'm I'm obviously an open an openly gay man as well. So obviously the fact that I'm a fashion designer, it comes natural to some people that I am a gay man, which is true in this instance, in this instance, but you don't have to be a gay man to do clothes, regardless if it's for men or women. And it doesn't mean that because I'm a gay man, I'm only doing women's wear and I shouldn't do men's wear, you know? For me, my sexual orientation and and and, and the choice I, I i i work i work in has nothing to do and and shouldn't shouldn't affect my career or my way of living it, it should it it shouldn't be the subject of why am i doing this job or because i am this type of person and uh, sometimes i do feel that there are positive connotations to it as well because obviously generally women have a tendency to, to be a bit more comfortable around gay men because they know that I wouldn't be hitting on them or, or they can they can be more comfortable undressing in front of me if I need to fit them or something like that so I'm not saying it's always negative but again I don't think it should be the subject to um choose a gay designer just because he is not going to be interested in whatever do, doing doing things that that you are thinking about you know mr dean jera do you have anything yes. to add? um yeah. i think in in our field uh, there are many stereotypes um some being like um like school dropouts um an easy path um people who don't really have direction and go into the field. But I think like, obviously in this conversation, I think the main stereotype is um, being very feminine or being gay, for example. But we, we also need to see where that is coming from. And again, for a man to go into this field, um, 
a lot of people just label um, the individual as being gay. Um, but I believe that is coming from because it's, it, it, they saw it, and especially in the past, um, because a lot of these um, jobs and, and, and gay people, let's say, I don't know how many years ago, weren't as accepted in a lot of um, roles. So they all branched out to these sort of roles where they were more accepted, let's say, in the hairdressing industry. So obviously, seeing that, um, they also classify a lot of men that go into the industry um, as being gay. But we've seen massive changes. I mean, <laughs> there are so many people, um, so many males that go into the industry that aren't gay. Um, and we also see a lot of gay people going into it. But I think the biggest stereotype is that if you're a man going into this industry, then there's a good possibility that you're gay. I mean, I think uh, <clears throat> it's mainly the same for um, uh, people in the theater arts, performers. Um, if if uh, basically the assumption is, and that's something that is much more prevalent um, with younger people so, but uh, it's still there um it's it's this uh, notion that if you go if you do theater um you're either really feminine or you're gay and i mean it's uh, you, you get uh, straight and gay men who um do theater but it's just one of those uh, just one of those stereotypes um but yeah i don't have much to add in that regard um, can, can, can I ask a curiosity uh, because um, to, to Dean, is it possible to ask it? Because um, if, if a barber now is a man who services men. So is there a lot of stereotype there if you're just exclusively for a beard or, you know, if you're just servicing sort of men in that way or? No, I, no, I, I, there's no stereotype over there. I think it's actually manly. <laughs> quite cool now, I think, to become, yes. to become a barber. And it's also even reflected on hairdressing as well. So being barbering came in with such a strong demand. Um, even I think now hairdressers aren't, um, that stereotype has decreased as in people aren't just seeing hair, uh, male hairdressers as being gay. It's actually, I feel like it's, they're seeing it as a very cool um, career path as well. So I started hairdressing over 20 years ago. And back then you'd sort of feel that um, the stereotype was very strong, but I still feel that um, we're breaking away from all that, be it in fashion, being, and again, social media has played a massive influence because again, we're a very small country and we, all, we that before social media was as strong as it is today. And we only saw what was happening in Malta. So we're, we only know what we could see. Now we're seeing it on a global scale. We're seeing so many different people um, entering the field. And in reality, you get people going into any career that are, I mean, come from, from any different positions about gender, let's say, at the end of the day, I think. Um, and Benjamin really described it properly, like it's, it's blaring out, which it is. We, I, I do actually feel that it's, it's um, being blurred and there isn't really... Um, a gender that really fixes, that, that, that you can actually label these careers with. And people are obviously more accepting in everything, I think, now, nowadays. It, it's much more acceptable. Um, that's what I think. Yeah, thank you. This was a really interesting, you know, how you described the, the kind of stereotypes that you've that you had to deal with in your, in your respective lines of work. And so do you feel that, especially at the beginning, of your careers, did you feel that the fact that you were a man, you know, impacted your career in any way? Anyone would like to go first? Um, uh, uh, I think particularly, um, uh, I felt this in the in the beginning when I first started dabbling around with theater. I went to an all an all boys secondary school, so uh, you can imagine. Um, they're like uh, you were only cool if you like played football in the big break um, and stuff like that. I was one of the literally like few, probably one of like the ten people in a school of three hundred that didn't like playing football. So already there was like this huge uh, division. Um, like to make it worse, so, but I was like I also trained in I was also training in musical theater, so also doing like acting, singing, dancing. 
um which which are things that i wouldn't i would never like have even dared to speak about them uh with my male friends uh it was quite ridiculous actually like one time i remember i was i was going abroad with with the, my drama school to perform an excerpt uh from high school musical um uh, of course i told my friend my school friends that i was uh that i was going ab- going abroad to perform um, however, like the second they asked me um, what the name of the play is, I didn't even tell them it was a musical. When they told me, asked me what the name of the play is, I told I literally told them, I forgot. Huh? I don't know what it is. They actually believed me. Um, but uh, it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, it was pretty crazy to see like how, I mean, just because something involves um, uh, a discipline that is usually associated with women, it practically marginalizes you um from uh, from the rest of from the rest of the school and funnily enough there was a huge shift then from secondary school um to sixth form um i attended saint Aloysius college for sixth form and there together with practically every other post-secondary institution um there is a much much bigger fo- uh, there is a much bigger focus given to the creative arts and the theater arts i mean if you take saint Aloysius for example and the soiree is probably one of the biggest, like uh, one of the biggest, like extracurricular activities of the school. It's one of the main reasons uh, many students choose Saint Aloysius, actually. And it was extremely interesting to see this huge shift in mentality from secondary school to sixth form. Um, whereas in secondary school, I wouldn't have even dared to speak about like being involved in a musical. Uh, in sixth form, then. Um, being involved in this war uh, was was a, almost a claim to fame. If you were given like the the lead role in the musical, this like the art, like everyone knows your name. Um, uh-huh. It's a totally different world. Unfortunately, at least in my case, um, this change in mentality endured even after uh, sixth form. Um, so, uh, with regards to uh, like these these stereo the, the stereotyping, I'd say it was mostly prevalent towards the beginning of my career and almost exclusively um, within uh, my my school bubble and not outside of that. Um, I, I have experience similar um, to Benjamin. I remember at school I I used to folk I was at the art and um, cost art and design and we had to do all sorts of different art forms. We used to work on wood, we used to work on stone, we had textiles, we had clay, you know? And obviously I was always more focused on textile and fashion. And I remember even, even from, from my lecturers, I, they, they used to see that I wasn't as interested in working on wood and stone, I was more um, focused more on, on fashion. But then, obviously, once I kind of took the, to the, the decision to focus more on that field, um, I remember applying for Fashion Week. Um, I was accepted uh, mainly because I was doing menswear, because I was a man doing menswear. It, it was something that they were looking for because they didn't have any menswear, you know? So, in a way, it kind of helped me um, pave, pave my way to work in the industry I am currently working in. So I think it's just a matter of how you go about it and, and the time and the circumstances you find yourself in. But obviously you need to, you need to be patient and, and uh, understand that it's, it's not always going to be as easy as it is for, for some of us. There, but there are still people who find it difficult even to come to terms with being themselves nowadays. So uh, I hope that this, this message helps uh, people be more confident and uh, f- find their way in, in society to be whoever they want to be. Personally speaking, uh, for example, in my career, um, m- most of my work life has always been with, with female colleagues. Um, so mm, my, my first job after graduating was uh, my, fem- my colleagues were mostly female. 
I used to work in a drug addiction and rehabilitation center, uh, a very small one. Then I worked at, um, at um, 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 disability sort of um, institution that we used to help children with autism. More again, most of them were, were females. So um, to be fair, um, I, as I grew along the way, um, I, I, I looked for a sort of a male uh, sort of presence, you know, um, to discuss the football that happens during the weekends. To so you 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 to find yourself, you know, that that uh, uh, and find someone with a common interest, you know, um, being at lunch, you know, um, and most women discussing their thing, and you are um, mm, so what shall I dis discuss with 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 this person? Um, so on that aspect, it's, it's, it's a bit of a challenge sometimes. Um, however, obviously now I, I, I got used to it. Again, um, I, I think I'm, where I work, I'm the only, I'm the only male psychologist. Um, um, there, there are some others, but they are in different sections, so I, I don't meet with them. Um, and I, I grew accustomed to it, you know, so I, I have no problem with it. Um, I do sometimes say to myself, mm, it would be interesting to discuss what, um, what's happening with my preferred football team, for example. I mean, but those are more areas of interest that I like, you know, um, and the chances of having a male which likes that are higher than, you know, so I would put it more in terms of an area of interest. Um, so in a way it does influence me, I'm being honest, uh, but I, 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 I'm very comfortable now with it. Um, I think it brings me a point because the problem with toxic masculinity is um, two, two needs, two basic human needs. Um, I, I think toxic masculinity is very much influenced by two very basic human needs. One, the need to belong. Uh, and the second one, the need to survive. You know, um, the need to belong is very, very strong in, in human beings. You know, you see it in children, you know, and they, they, they try to be with others. Um, um, you see it in, in, in adults, they go out of their way to, to belong in a group, um, adolescents, for example, um, and you need to survive, you know, and um, so when you think about um, um, trying to get that promotion, um, trying to, to date, um, for example, and so um, uh, be, the, be the preferred partner, the chosen partner, you know, so th th there are those sort of driving forces that I think um, really influence um, these. That, and obviously in employment, that also sometimes come, come, come in as well, you know, so not in my case, it, it, it didn't happen, but, you know, um, you, you see it happen, unfortunately, with the gender, um, the, the, the pay gap, you know, um, women, for example, are paid less for the same job, um, unfortunately, to the reality, you know. It's, it's an assertion of male power, male dominance, you know. Um, so just, just to mention how toxic masculinity is still very present in, 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 uh, in, in, in employment. Okay, uh, Mr. Dean, Jay, do you want to add anything to this or shall we? I don't really think it's impacted my life, so right? The only impact it might have had was um, I started hairdressing when I was about 14, but I was still in school. Um, again, I come from a family of hairdressers, so my mother had her own salon. But again, we had a lot of male. We, we, I have two uncles that are in the hairdressing industry that um, do hairdressing as well. So for me, it was quite normal as well, um, being a male in this role. Um, the only thing is that at the age of 14, again, because of all the stereotypes, types behind the, the, the field, you'd, you'd be like, um, how am I gonna, how are my friends going to react to this? Um, but in reality, everyone was quite, um, I mean, supportive and they actually thought it was quite cool. I, I, I started cutting all my, my friends' hair and the majority of them were all male and I still do their hair to today. So I, I don't feel that in that aspect it, it impacted me much, but I can understand that um, it, had, it could have gone completely wrong. Um, so let's say if I was that 14 year old boy who told my friends and I got teased or bullied or whatever, I am sure that it could have taken me out of the field and um, I would have ended up doing something completely different.
So I, I was lucky in that aspect that um, I felt the support from friends, even teachers encouraged me. Um, but I'm sure there are, there are, there are some who um, don't find that support. And obviously it's much harder for them to end up um, going into a career that they feel um, they really want to, to do. Yeah, that, this is this is really interesting. So we all kind of discussed, you know, how uh, it, there are these stereotypes that can impact, but it also depends on your support systems around you and the, the people who are next to you. And this is actually a really, really interesting point. And in fact, so as your, you know, careers um, develop in your respective industries, um, did you ever feel that your ability to fulfill your potential was ever questioned or... Once again, was it because of these really good support systems that um, it did not really make a difference? In my case, I was I, I always felt very supported by my colleagues. You know, there was no question why I why am I made in this profession? Um, so I don't think it was ever, to be honest. You know, I, I think both Benjamin and Dean mentioned a very good point. Once once you manage to sort of show them that you really made um, a good job out of it you know there's no question as to why should, should should yeah, there should be a female who's doing that or you know once you really show a person you know your capability you know um, i think the the stereotype you know should just fall you know it, it, it's not a question of uh, you know if you if you're not good at it obviously then you would people would judge you you know people would say you're not good at that so you know maybe you should try something else you know, or, or it doesn't suit you, um, uh, this, this particular thing. But um, it just goes to show, you know, that a male or a female can perform equally well when they put their heads to it, you know, when they have the talent, because sometimes some things you need talent. I'm certainly not good at haircutting, for example. Um, but, you know, there shouldn't be any barrier, you know, just because I'm a male or a, I'm a female, you know. I think those two examples were really good. Anyone else would like to discuss this impact on their careers? Maybe Ben? Um, I feel, I feel uh, people are more informed nowadays and they're aware and they are in favor. They don't have any, any issues as such. I mean, once, once they know that we are in that field and we are, as, as Benjamin, the other Benjamin said that we are doing it right. I don't think that, that, that they have any reservations as to why we're doing this job. It was our choice. And uh, if, if we're doing it right, you know, I mean, who, who, who are you to tell me that just because it's a female dominated job, I shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> Um, with regards to the <clears throat> like creative arts in Malta, um, I, I'd say it's pretty hard for both men and women um, to like, make a living um, in this industry. And it's not down to uh, any element of sexism, but rather it's, it's all because the arts industry in Malta is still in its infancy. I mean, the, we, we've only gotten like our first... Uh, you, we only got our first union uh, last year. Uh, we only got a national theatre company uh, a few years ago. Um, so uh -huh. it's, it's, at the moment, it's practically um, impossible. And very, very few are those who make a living in the arts industry in Malta um, just by doing that full time uh, without having a safety net. Um, but that's a completely different conversation. And uh -huh. um, that's practically it. Okay. Yeah, I, I'll just I'll just go just close up on this. I, I just think that um, you no know, being a man in this industry didn't like I mean people don't really judge on that. And then I think once you show how passionate you are and how capable you are, all the stereotype goes out of the window. I think it's just people, especially now again with social media, people are seeing exactly what you're what you provide provide what you're doing, what you're capable of doing. So. I don't really think that gender is an issue and they see that um, as an issue or um, as a capability. They're actually just seeing your work and if you're good enough for them and if um, they like what you're doing, then 
there's no problem there, I, I feel. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, if you, if you, I mean, if you're the best, then, then why should people question you for, you know, because of your, you know, sec your sexual orientation or your gender, you know, so fair enough. And um, so what do you guys think um, influences men to feel they need to act in a certain manner to assert their masculinity? I think it's mostly other men. Um, I mean, personally, um, I, I'm, I'm uh, generally more at ease with my female friends than with my male friends. And that's mostly down to the fact that um, there is, I feel like there is, uh, when I'm with my female friends, I feel like it's, I don't need to um, prove myself in the same way that I do with my male friends. Um, as Benjamin uh, was, was saying earlier today, um, with w w when you're around men, oftentimes it feels like um, we're all trying to um, prove ourselves. We're all trying to show that we're better um, than, uh, than each other. Um, so we're not we're generally we're not really making it easier for ourselves, I feel. Um, with women, on the other hand, uh, again, generally, and um, this is not how everything goes, but uh, personally, I feel like I'm, uh, I'm my it, it is much easier to be vulnerable um, around women. And I mean, it's pretty ironic because I've, I think that showing vulnerability at the end of the day is much, much is, is, is much stronger than uh, you know, putting up a front and acting like a man, um, keeping everything in. Um, so I think in generally, we can be our own uh, worst enemies by the way we uh, talk to our, our male friends uh, when they open up or when they behave a certain way. Um, so I think most of the time it's down to us um, to make it better for ourselves. I completely agree with what Benjamin said. Um, unfortunately, um, I've, I've, I've had the, I, I don't know if you, you rather share this experience, but um, I've been told you're a man, you shouldn't cry, for example, um, or um, do not show your emotions. If you're sad, just suck it up, you know, just, uh, just I, I, I've been told this simply because I'm a man, I'm a male, you know, um, and that's very unfortunate um, because um it's it's something again it's part of what toxic masculinity is you know um the being brave the being independent it's, there's nothing wrong with being brave there's nothing wrong with being independent the problem is that the toxic masculinity that it gets taken to an extreme you always have to be brave you always have to be independent so it's it's not on to ask for help it's not on to show some fear you know but these are basic human emotions you know um if, if we don't have fear you know, you cross the road and you probably get hit by a car because you don't look both ways. You have to have some element of fear, you know, to, to, to survive. And it's a, it, unfortunately, it has a huge impact on men, you know. Um, statistics show that uh, males don't seek both medical, all right, and mental health, uh, sorry, mental, uh, mental health aid simply because they're a male. And simply because they've been socialized into um, trying to find a solution for their own, on their own, right? Um, so unfortunately, this could have tragic consequences. If I have something which is um, on a physical level, which is uh, hurting me, and I just don't speak up, I just don't seek help, you know, and just try to bear it out, just try to be strong, you know, you've heard, you've heard of these cases, you know, and then you realize it's cancer. Or then you realize it's it's some sort of um, illness that you have that when when you actually get diagnosed it's pretty late, you know because you've you've tried to be a man about it you know don't complain don't talk about it don't show weakness don't 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 share it with others you know um, it, it's very unfortunate you know um, um, suicide rates of males are much higher than those of females first of all unfortunately they choose most of the time more violent ways of, of dying. Um, but also, unfortunately, because they don't seek help, um, 
at, on the top of the top of my head, most of my clients are females. You know, um, the problem is not that females suffer from more mental health issues than males do, because but men do not seek help because they try to uh, try to try to survive on their own. You know, and it's a, it, I think it is a greater pandemic than COVID. You know, and what we are experiencing in, in this, you know, more a lot of me, people are dying. A lot of men are dying, literally dying, you know, because they are not taking care of their emotional and physical needs. And uh, it, it's a real, real tragedy. And this is why I, 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 I'm so passionate sort of about the subject, um, obviously being in the field, but also seeing these men suffering because of preconceived ideas, preconceived stereotypes of how they should act and limiting them from, first of all, achieving their full potential, you know, but even accessing basic needs, you know, um, which should be free for all, should be free um, uh, without any sort of limitation, you know, and seeing them sort of work with these irrational, very irrational beliefs, you know, and then they realize, they say, oh my goodness, you know, sort of, I, I've, I've behaved, I've thought in this way, and it was, it could have been this easy, you know, uh, it, it's, it's a real pity, you know. Um, so, so I, I think I, I think this concept of toxic masculinity, when you really think about it, it really impacts uh, our lives uh, in more ways than you can imagine. You know, even driving. You know, um, you mentioned driving earlier on. You know, um, you have to show off your your car. You have to show off um, your your manliness because of the way you drive. Um, you know, um, or the concept of you drive like a woman. What, what does that mean? You know. Um, um, so I, I think if, if anything comes out of this discussion, you know, we should reflect on our manliness about um, how how we try to project our manhood sort of onto others and how, how we try to be men in front of others, you know, um, how, are, how are we doing this? And, and it, it percolates into every corner, into every um, area of our lives. Dean, for example, Earlier on mentioned the mask incident, you know, it caught him by surprise. He didn't realize it. He only reflected about it later, you know. Um, and then it obviously makes an impact on, on, on an impact on, on on the behavior that we have and the relationships we have with others. You know, it's constantly there. It's constantly there. Okay, so um, unless anybody else wants to jump in. Um, uh, okay, so you, you all mentioned some really um, interesting points here, yeah, and especially here, uh, Mr. Gatti mentioned, you know, that this kind of being like its own silent pandemic, and you know, how many times have men been told, you know, to stiffen, stiffen up that upper lip, you know, and you know, boys don't cry, you know, and I'm sure, you know, especially now in this period of, of you know, of this pandemic, um, you know, even more and more, you know, men would perhaps seek you know, help less and less, you know, and um, they'll be confronted with their feelings even more. And so this is why it's even more important um, that, you know, men are so more friendly with each other, you know, to speak about what's going on in order to not, um, uh, you know, so that the consequences won't be so dire and so, and so, and so awful and so terrible. Uh, you know, especially now with this European Super League business, I'm sure more men are even more depressed than, than normal. So, uh, you know, it's uh, it's a stupid example, but I'm I'm sure many men would uh, would 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 uh, you know would need to talk about these things to make themselves even feel better. And uh, so we're gonna we're gonna move away a bit from from these topics and um, go on to the next question, uh, which says which is do you feel as though Maltese men stay away from exploring certain industries out of fear of being subject to certain stereotypes? Go ahead. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but I don't think it's just Maltese men in general. I think it's men, men in general on a global level. Um, I, I think at a very young age, like, again, I mean, the typical father would want the, 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 their sons to play football and take a different route. So I feel that when it's ingrained at such a young age, even at school, um, and that, again, there are boys and girls that do different things. And obviously, for 
for a son to go up to his father and say, listen, I want to do hairdressing, which is slightly on that feminine side, is going to be very difficult. So obviously a child will try and, and choose a different route. Anyone else would like to, yeah, go ahead. Statistically, in the past years, if, if, if you, I did some research on this, and, and uh, as I mentioned before, uh, for example, courses in university, you know, the, the caring sort of courses, um, the ones I've mentioned earlier, so nursing, social work, psychology, um, are predom still predominated by, by, by women, you know, and obviously then the architecture, engineering you know um etc um are, are, are still dominated by men although interestingly enough um even university statistics over the past years have been mostly uh dominated more by females um so so as a general population there are more females studying than males um but it also begs the question as to why this is happening you know uh, are, are males um going into the work uh work industry before you know um are they sort of sort of pushed by to do that to start earning money more for example quickly um uh so so there's there's a, i think we need to understand why why that is happening as well obviously if you look at the nso statistics as well um again most males work in construction business fisheries um so the, again the typical um IT, you know, the typical sort of, uh, and, and, and women more work more towards clerical, you know. So as Dean said, I think it's, it's still, it's, it's very much, we live in a globalized world. So it's not, we're not, we don't live in a side or we're probably copying the same patterns as, you know, but it's, it's a good question to reflect in as to, actually today I had, I had a particular client who was telling me, I chose this particular course, but maybe I should have been doing something else. And I question, uh, I'm not going to mention the, the course, you know, but it's male dominated course, you know, um, so what, 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 what was the driving force between behind you choosing that kind of course, instead of doing what you actually wanted to do, you know, um, was part of it being a male, um, was part of it trying to, um, to perform according to the script that you should, you're a male, so you probably want to have this, this, or this course, you know, um, and these are the courses that you know, you're going to earn more money, you're going to be the best, uh, you know, and um, these are the ones which have the highest sort of uh, status among courses, so choose one of these, you know. Um, if it were a female, probably it would be another two uh, courses, for example, you know, so there is this. Um, I, have, I have a son, you know, and, and, and um, sort of, I, I, I remember myself thinking, uh, what if he likes singing? for example, you know, um, how, how would that experience be for him? And um, Benjamin earlier on mentioned the fact that um, being involved in um, Tetrix was a sort of something that uh, he was shy about, you know, talking about with his friends, you know, and um, I, we, did, we did drama at school and uh, I, I still remember <laughs> uh, the experience of, um, I had the leading role at, in Form 4 and, and I was one of the only maids who had a very thin voice, so I could reach the high notes when I sing. <laughs> and so I was chosen to be a bride. <laughs> and uh, going out with a bridal uh, dress costume, you know, with a, in, a, in a hall uh, of about 1,000 male, mostly <laughs> students, <laughs> was a terrifying experience, you know. And uh, I, I, when I reflect about it, it was a, I said, still get that fear, you know, it was not performance anxiety, it was the fact that you're going, you're, you're in this female dress, you know, you're going to sing. And I also remember making a choice, you know, next year, for sure, I'm not going to have a female role, I'm going to take a male role. And I made sure, I made sure that I wanted to have my voice, which was much deeper, you know, and I was actually praying to God, please give me a deeper voice. You know, um, but it just goes to show how strong they are. You know, today, today, I actually say, I wish my voice was a bit thinner um, as it was before to help me reach those higher notes, you know, because it was seamless for me. Once my voice broke, it was much more difficult to reach those high notes, you know, um, to, but it's because I have, I have reflected on this, it's, you know, 
Um, otherwise, we'd probably be saying, no, no, don't do that. Don't, don't sing those highest notes. Don't, don't, because that, that's not manly enough, you know. Um, would anyone else like to? Um, not... Yes, yeah. um, I feel like um, the new generation of of kids that that is coming up. Um, is is more more educated and informed and unlike us who grew up in a time where the there was this idea that a man should be strong you know even even if you if you, even if you just watch a film you know rocky like the strong man that men should all be like him nowadays we see we see all sorts of superheroes we see all sorts of um action figure male female you know so obviously these kids are being brought up um, with, with a more of an open mind as to what is strong or what is powerful. Um, and once they start growing, I feel like they're experiencing us, me, for example, a male fashion designer, which generally is, is more of a female dominated field. Dean, you know, a male hairdresser, which generally, as, 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 as we all know, is more female-dominated uh, industry. The fact that there are us who, who portray ourselves and, and have these careers in, in these fields, I feel like it's, it's helping, helping them explore and our presence with hope, obviously, social media and uh, TV and all sorts of other media um, help them explore um, their desire uh, future career and uh, and choices. I think uh, it's uh, as as uh, Marco um, uh, rightly mentioned. It's it's all about role models, and nowadays um, uh, it's much easier for kids to um, if they're into fashion, for example. I mean, they have. Uh, if, if they want to get into fashion, they have someone to look up to um, uh, who's male. If they want to get into hairdressing, uh, the same thing. Not because there wasn't uh, before, but um, male uh, male individuals in uh, the so-called female-dominated roles have become much more prevalent. I mean, uh, same goes if we uh, if we look into uh, like entertainment. Um, uh, before uh, male roles in films or TV were all about um, uh, saving the damsel in distress, uh, being this like a hunk with abs and like sleeping with every girl they set their eyes on. Like you still see it for sure, but um, it is much less uh, prevalent than it was before. You get a lot of um, films that actually explore, um, you know, uh, male protagonists from an emotion point of view it's it may they're no longer um just uh, instruments um to the plot um uh, we, we don't really get to talk about like male objectification in film um uh, because it's it's maybe it's much less obvious than female objectification but um i do believe that it's it's bec it's slowly becoming um less and less prevalent Thank you. This was a you know a really interesting discussion, and and you're right, and you're all very very right, and it, exactly. It's not just Maltese men, you know, it's other societies as well. Um, uh, we're going to take a question from the, one of the people in the audience right now. Um, this is the question I would, um, I'm going to read out. So it's it says, in the last month, we have seen some really serious incidents of toxic masculinity in Maltese society. The comments made on Marwa, a female captain who was falsely blamed for the Suez Canal blockage, the sexualization of the CGI image of a 2,000-year-old woman, and the more recent and more recently the reaction to a young girl who yesterday shared her experience of sexual harassment and catcalling in the streets of Malta. What can men do when they see such things happening and do not want to support toxic masculinity? Do you think it's better to speak up or remain quiet? I think the biggest issue when these incidents happen is that men don't call out their friends. If I'm doing something wrong and a friend of mine says, Isma, like what you're doing is wrong, then I'm going to know it's wrong because a friend, uh, a friend has my best intentions at heart and I'm going to know that I'm doing something wrong. 
I think, um, and we're probably all guilty of it to a certain extent. Um, it's it's hard to tell our friends uh, when they're doing something wrong. I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll be the first person to say so. Um, but I think that's where it all starts. If we see our friends doing something that uh, that's counterproductive um, or just plain wrong, then we should be the first ones to call it out. Not in a sexist kind of way, but we should really should man up in terms of, but I think as males, we are doing a disservice to ourselves when we don't speak up about these things, you know, because we are just reinforcing the toxic masculinity, you know, and we need to move away from uh, the, the concept of sort of omerta of not talking about something you know, uh, that's happening right in front of our eyes, you know, and move more towards a concept of being compassionate towards each other, you know, um, but also compassionate towards ourselves, towards our own sort of, um, our own sex, you know. Um, if I am actually doing a disservice when I, when I, when I um, reinforce the toxic masculinity aspect, you know, so I'm telling a man, it's okay to catcall. It's okay to harass another 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 woman. It's okay because I don't speak up, you know. So in order to, to to simply put, we yes should speak up, and we should not only speak up, speak up. We should also raise awareness about about this, you know. As I said, this is a and and, you, and I think you uh, Andrew you said it's a silent pandemic. It is really a silent pandemic, and and we should really uh, work on. Um, on raising awareness about this, about um, how I said before, how it percolates every single aspect of our life. There was an interesting statistic um, in the UK, um, just um, get the numbers up because, um, um, so 81% 81 of women in the UK have had some sort of sexual harassment all right, um, in the street, you know, 81%, and also 43% of men, okay, so it's much lower, but 43 is also quite significant, you know, but so um, probably most female viewers can relate that at one point in their lives, they probably had some sort of sexually harassed, uh, some sort of sexual harassment, obviously done by a male, you know, um, and, you know, um, I think it's a real pity because we're doing a disservice to ourselves, you know, and probably you, you're probably thinking that when, when you do this, you're probably thinking that I'm, I'm being very cool with my, with, with my others, but how, how are you being viewed by your female counterparts? How are you be, being viewed by the rest of society, you know? Um, so we're actually doing a very bad advert to ourselves when, when we behave. Um, and I think it's becoming more as awareness is raised you know, and that's why we need to point out these behaviors, you know, um, the more you act in this negative way, you know, the more you are called out, the more you can, we can change it, you know, so yes, we should really speak out and we should really reflect on how this toxic masculinity is um, affecting my everyday life, you know, my everyday life. Okay, so um, unless anyone has any more remarks about this, we'll go to our final question. So a question just to close this this uh, discussion. Um, and uh, this is sort of a question as well that perhaps the viewers can, you know, take on board and implement in their own daily lives, um, depending on what your answers are. So the question, the answer, the question is, uh, what do you think can be done so that we can help fight the toxic masculinity that is present in today's society? So who wants to go first? Um, I just think that uh, it heavily depends on education. I think we really need to enforce it from, from a very young age. Um, and again, I'm, I'm a very big believer that school and education shouldn't just be about maths, physics, and those these subjects. We need the soft skills to be um, brought back. Um, and we literally need to tell our students um, the, the reality of, of, of all this so we, we can't um, 
we can't label anymore um, and it comes with like providers as well so we can't have just the father being the provider and we can't just it, it, it's it needs to be shared i mean we need to have a balanced life and this is important from a very young age that they start seeing these things so that at a, so that when they're older they can be able to call out on these on, on these things um but education i think education is key um and we just need to continue um, drilling it into all our children that again um we need a more balanced life a more balanced society and at the end of the day if you're passionate about anything and if you want to do anything then it doesn't really depend on your gender it's just if you're passionate then go for it and people should be more accepting of all these things Um, to continue with Dean, um, obviously I agree with you, education is the most important thing because I, I have pushed a lot on the new generation, what, what, we, what, what they are seeing, what we are teaching them, and I think that that is the backbone for all of this to be over, overcome, to overcome this, this issue, let's say. Um, uh, and obviously, as Mr. Mr. Benjamin Gott said, uh, raising awareness to the people that have this mindset or have these these attitudes when it comes to male to male or male to female, um, raise awareness that listen, if 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 you're doing something of the sort that obviously is affecting somebody's way of living or somebody regardless um it's it's wrong you know you need you need you need to you need to do do something that helps the society that helps people living a better a better a better life and uh, being a man doesn't have to be being macho or being rude or being stronger than other men or stronger than women being a man is being gentle, being being a nice person, and represent yourself in a manner that is, a, is a accepted by everybody around you. Um, so uh, I, I won't mention education again because it's been highlighted, um, but I think for sure we need to be more aware um, education, because we have the power of education, and we uh, are aware of it, okay, now we have no excuse, all right, um, if, if I know that something is happening, um, then I have the responsibility to do something about it, um, and that is why we should um, speak up more, more about it, um, so we cannot stop at just education, we cannot just stop at, at awareness, um, we actually need to start um, um, highlighting these kind of behaviors, for example, Benjamin said, with friends, uh, with, with colleagues, all right? Um, at man with, with management at work, um, in our different spheres, wherever we live, we need to, we need to speak up. We need to, to, because at the end of the day, it's also abusive. What, what we are talking about is abuse, you know? Um, and um, uh, we need to also work on empowering, all right? Um, not just, um, first of all, I think we have to realize that this is not a war, you know, because again, at the base of toxic masculinity is a, a warlike attitude that I want to take power. I want to be more powerful than the other sex, or I want to be other, more powerful than the other males, you know. Um, so let's, let's work on, on changing this attitude into more a compassionate sort of attitude towards the rest of humanity and also towards ourselves. You know, so if I'm a male and I have failed at something, you know, that I really wanted, you know, and um, and and maybe the first thing that comes to mind, you know, I'm not man enough because I I failed and I'm not man enough at this. Why not um, working on um, being compassionate with yourself and and thinking about um, okay, maybe I, I failed because the circumstances weren't right, or because maybe I didn't put enough effort in this, or. Uh, or maybe um, there was some other factor, you know, and it's okay, I can try again, you know. Um, so 
instead of uh, instead of thinking I'm not man enough and I didn't manage to do it. You know, I, I hear these things um, in, in therapy <laughs> quite often, you know. Um, so we, sh we should work on, on empowering this, this uh, a compassionate sort of attitude and doing away with this divisive, you know, um, I, I think the Maltese are very um, strong in this ascendant reality. Um, fil pesta, um, fil, 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 fil politica, of course, it's always, you know, this black and white me and you, I'm better than you thinking, you know, and I think the Maltese excel at this, um, also because of the fact that we're an island, perhaps, and a very small society, but uh, community. Um, but let's work on just um, changing the attitude on bridging the gaps that we have, you know, and, and helping each other out. Why, why do we need to fight each, each other, you know, and why do we need to compete all the time? Let's, let's work on, um, on, on, um, on bridging the gaps and um, appreciating the differences that each and every person brings, you know, um, being a male, you know, I'm different than you. Um, so I have my own individuality and I bring something to the table that another person doesn't bring. You know, it's not that all males do the same thing, al um, uh, So we all have our own individuals and let's work on empowering a person, you know. So whenever I think of my son, I, 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 and, and the first thing that comes to mind, no, if he, if he wants to sing, um, no, it's better not because he'll be labeled as whatever. But and so I catch myself doing that and I think, empower him to be whatever he wants to be, you know, and that will bring out his full potential that's that's my goal for him you know that's my goal that's my dream for him you know um and let's let's work on this you know let's work on this okay um anyone else has any final comments or remarks or uh, anything else that they would like to mention okay so seeing as there are none uh i think We'll, we've discussed some fantastic, you know, and really pertinent issues here. So um, regarding, you know, what it means to be a man, you know, the, the topics of toxic masculinity, you know, what's and what's most importantly, what society should do in order to move away from these stereotypes and uh, to be a more um, inclusive and um, acceptable society. And, and at this point here, I think uh, this panel discussion will come to an end. So firstly, I'd like to thank um, the panelists here. For, thank you for all of you so very much for these really interesting insights into your careers and into your, uh, into your experiences. Uh, thank you very much. It was a, a fantastic discussion. Uh, we also like to thank uh, the viewers watching us on Facebook Live at home. Uh, thank you very much for um, uh, supporting us and um, sending in your questions. And of course, lastly, thank you to KSU uh for um hosting this uh discussion this panel discussion called be a man thank you very much and goodbye